Okay, 2P, welcome back. This is the part two of the properties of parabolas, and we're going to figure out how to use the graphing calculator to find our properties. So let's take a look. Um, the first thing you should do is to clear the memory of your calculator, because there might be something in there that, um, that will mess you up that another student has been working on. Um, so the way you do that, and mine's already been cleared, but I'll show you again. You press second, and then go to the plus, and then we want to reset, so we want 7. We want to reset all the RAM, so we want 1. And then lastly, it just asks us, are we sure? Yep, we're sure. We want to reset it, so we press 2. So those keystrokes, again, were second, and you can see them up here. I've got them right on here. Press second, then plus, then 7, 1, 2. And that should clear the memory on your calculator. So the first thing we're going to do is put the equation in, and I have all of these steps on this uh, handout sheet for you, uh, but I'm going to go through them on this calculator too. So we are going to enter the equation first by pressing y equals, and then we're going to enter this 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. So 2x, this is our squared button down here, 2x squared plus 5x uh, minus 1. And once we've got that entered in, we can press graph. And there we have the graph. And you can see that that matches the, uh, the two little inserts that I have in there for pictures. Now we want to find the vertex of this parabola. And what we're going to do, if you t go right along with what, uh, with the instructions I have here, it says press second trace and then choose three if our parabola has a minimum, four if our parabola has a maximum. So we need to have a look at our parabola before we press second trace. This has a low point, which means it's a minimum value. So when I press second trace, I'm choosing three for the minimum value. So I'm going to press three. So there, it's flashing on the screen and it says, left bound. So what we want to do is go find that vertex and then go a little bit to the left of it and press enter. And then we're going to go a little bit to the right of it. So we have to press the right arrow, right cursor key until I'm to the right of it. Press enter. And now it actually says guess. And I'm going to go over as close as I can to it and press enter. And there's my vertex right here. So it says, and you can see down here, I've done the screen cap and you have this on your handout too. Here is our um, minimum value. And when it gives you the minimum value, this is actually the minimum value. And this is where it occurs. So it's actually displaying the vertex. So this vertex is at negative 1.25 comma negative 4.125. Now the axis of symmetry is the line that goes right down the center. We talked about that before. I can put that on here if I want to. Um, it's just going to go straight down the center. The main thing about the axis of symmetry is it always passes through the vertex. And so since it passes through the vertex, we label it x equals the x coordinate of the vertex, which in this case is negative 1.25. Now the y coordinate of the vertex is either your maximum or minimum value depending on whether it opens up or down. Since this one opens up, it's a low point. Just take a look at it. It doesn't get any lower than that. Since it's a low point, that's a minimum value and the minimum value is negative 4.125. Now let's find our y intercept. The y intercept is the easiest thing to find. Uh, on your calculator, all you have to do is press the trace key. This is trace up here. And then hit zero and enter, and it jumps right to it. So it shows us that the y-intercept is negative one. And so that again was just press trace, and then hit the zero key and enter, and it jumps right to it. So the y-intercept's pretty easy. Now the x-intercept is not so easy. 
Now, most of the time, you're going to have two x-intercepts. Sometimes you may not have any x-intercepts. Uh, and occasionally, you'll have one x-intercept. But most times, you'll have two. So I'm going to go through these instructions. You have them all written down there. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is press second trace. And we want to choose number 2, which says 0, because we're finding the zeros, where it crosses the x-axis. is called the zeros. So there's likely two x-intercepts. So to start, we're going to choose one, and we're going to move our cursor key to the one I want. So um, on, your, uh, on your graph, we actually went to this one over here. Whoops. Right there. So you want to get pretty close to it. And there, we're right on it. Now let's pay attention to the fact that it's asking you left bound. So that's this step here. It says the calculator asks you left bound. So we're going to press the left cursor key. Don't mix up your right and your left or things will go bad. I'm going to press the left cursor key and then press enter after I've clicked it a couple of times. Now notice the calculator is asking us right bound. That's this little picture this diagram down here. Since it's asking us right, we're going to press the right cursor key until I'm past that and press enter. And now it asks for a guess, so it just wants us to go back to that intercept. And it displays what it is. So have a look down here. One thing that you need to make sure when you're looking at this is that um, after you've selected the left bound and the right bound, you need to have two little arrows that are pointing at each other. If they're pointing away from each other, you need your other left and your other right. So you need to go back and switch those two around. Uh, now it says repeat this process to find the other x-intercept. I'm going to do that very quickly. Uh, if I repeat this process to find the other x-intercept, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press second, trace, and then I need to choose the zero command. And the first thing, the very first thing I do is I go and put my cursor as close as I can get to the x-intercept I want to find, which in this case is this one over here, because I already found this one over here, so now I want to find this one. Now I pay attention to the fact that the calculator is asking me left bound. So I'm going to go a couple of clicks in the left direction and then press enter. A couple of clicks in the right direction, in fact more than a couple because I have to go past that x-intercept and press enter. And now notice I have these two little arrows pointing at each other that tells me I should be alright and it asks me to guess. So a guess means I'm going to go right back to where I think that x-intercept is and I'm going to press enter and it's going to tell me that the other x-intercept is at x equals point one eight six one. So I'm going to write that down. Zero point one eight six one is what this other one is in here. Okay. Now we're going to use the graphing calculator to actually solve this question. This is out of your textbook. Uh, we're given the equation of a satellite dish. A satellite dish is actually a parabola in nature because of some of the parabola's really unique properties. Um, things bounce around a parabola in exactly the right way to be useful. Uh, so a satellite dish is the shape of a parabola. So we're going to use the graphing calculator and graph that. So the first thing I'm going to do is press second plus seven one Two, and I've cleared the memory on my calculator so the stuff that I was doing before is um, out of there and now I'm going to press y equals and enter that information. I can either press 1 divided by 2 for a half or I could change it into its decimal equivalent as 0.5 but I put in the half x squared plus 2x plus 3 and I'm going to graph that. So there's what it looks like. Uh, let's take a screenshot of that and pull it in here. It says use a graphing calculator to graph the relation. Check. Got that done. Identify the coordinates of the vertex. So I'm going to have to go back and use the calculator to find the vertex. So that process was, and you can flip back and look at your, your notes, I hope you do, that process was press second trace and since this is right side up 
We want the minimum. So I'm going to press 3 for minimum. Now I'm going to go down by the vertex and I have to go a little bit to the left of the vertex. Press enter. Then go back the other way so that I'm going to the right of the vertex. Press enter. And then I have to guess and put my cursor key back on the vertex and press enter. Uh, so it says the minimum is at negative 2, 1. So the coordinates of the vertex are negative 2, 1. Write the equation of the axis of symmetry. Remember the axis of symmetry goes right down the center of the vertex. We write it as x equals the x coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 2. Find the y intercept. Well, the y intercept is going to be right there. Let's use the graphing calculator to find that. Uh, remember, all I have to do is press trace and then hit 0 because x is going to be 0. And when I press enter, it jumps right to it and it tells me that the y intercept is at 3. So this is our y intercept there. It's given it to us. The y intercept is 3. Identify the maximum or minimum value. This thing has a low point, so it has a minimum value. And that minimum value is going to be the y coordinate of the vertex, which we've already found, which is 1. So we say y equals 1 is the minimum value. And identify the x-intercepts. Well, it, there are none. And A. It does not cross the x-axis. So we're done that. So you have a few questions from your textbook to do. Um, and you're probably going to take a couple of class periods to get all of this done.